your karate. So today's uh, basics will be for white and yellow belts. We'll start with punches, we'll work our way onto blocks and then onto kicks. And hopefully we will take it to about half an hour of training and that way you will have more than enough footage to follow along when you're at home. If you're training in lockdown and you're staying safe, thank you. We appreciate all the work everyone's doing around the world to stay safe and to train safe. For now, feet in Heiko Dutch position, uh, parallel, and your hips not wider, not smaller, straight down from your hips. To make things easy, we're going to start with a basic chamber. You will see different schools. The chamber may be lower, it may be higher. Ours is over the short ribs, elbows back, please, no chicken wings. Draw your shoulder blades back and down. Imagine you're tucking your shoulder blades into your back pocket, and that brings down the shoulders and opens you up. From here, punch, twist, and at the very end, finish the punch. You'll see we're aiming with these two knuckles. It's called seiken. Number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Every punch has a twisting motion, and that's where you generate power. The punch doesn't turn here and travel out. You'll feel it's a bit awkward. From here, the elbow stays close to the body. Make sure it rubs against the rib cage, and at the last 10%, the fist turns to deliver power. When you are first learning, we leave out the hips. A good metaphor for this is when the cake boss teaches people how to bake, he does not start them off with a three-tier wedding cake. You start with learning to make cookies. Cookies teach you how to see if dough is done, learning to work with texture. Likewise in karate, we do not start you with super rimpe cutter, we start you here. And we'll add hip vibration in a little while. But for now, very basic, very simple punch. Itch. Knee. Sun. Shi. Go. Rook. Sitch. Hatch. Ku. And you. You feeling good? I hope so. From here, we're going to speed it up a little bit just so that you can get an idea of pushing yourself. We're going to just keep aiming for the, um, the floating ribs. It's a great target. Better than aiming for the belly because if they've got... Oh, I hope I don't upset the microphone doing that. If they've got a lot of muscle or fat here, it's not as good as a target as over the ribs. In fact, you can take your fingers, dig them into your ribs here and you'll feel how uncomfortable that is. That floating rib is your target. A little bit faster now. Itch. Ni. San. Shi. Go. Rook. Sitch. Hatch. Ku. Chu. Good. Now we're going to do three heights, and then we're going to move on from the punches to blocks. So from here, face punch. You must aim over what would be your own mouth. It helps to do this in front of a mirror, to make sure your target is correct and true. So, over your own mouth, itch, ni, san, chi, go, rook, sitch, hatch, ku, chu. Chest again, itch, ni, san, chi, go, rook, sitch, hatch, ku, chu. Stomach punch, itch. Stomach is a little bit of a misnomer. Uh, Gedan Uzuki, low punch. You're generally aiming below the belly um, where the belt is normally sitting. If you're not wearing your belt like Steve Urkel up here. But you're aiming for the bladder, actually. This has got lots of muscle, lots of fat protecting it. Bladder, not so much. Itch, ni, san, shi, go, rook, sitch, hatch, ku, ju. Another exercise, working on left and right, face punch, itch, chest punch, knee, get on, or low punch, sun, itch, knee, 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 sun. One of the great things about karate is it teaches something called midline crossing, which is very important for coordination in, student, in children. But it's also something that adults need to work on. 
And the more we cross left and right side of our bodies, the more we cross left and right side of our brains. It helps build much stronger neural pathways. And there are studies that have been found to help that martial arts helps with uh, neurodegenerative diseases. So no matter how old you are, these blocks can still be challenging. So we're going to break them down into little manageable pieces. Because how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. So from here, uh, how I start with teaching my students, making Wolverine-style X block and up. From here, secret block. If you watch our video on Shuhari, you'll see this broken down into eight moves. But for now, one, touch the elbow on the outside. P instructors, this is to help children from blocking on the inside. Must touch the elbow on the outside, pull back and up. You'll see that fist turns all the way. It's not resting on the forehead. It's not too far, nice and strong. Tighten that armpit. Two, secret block, elbow, face block. Secret block, elbow, face block. That hand is pulled all the way back into chamber because there's a hidden move there. Secret block, touch your elbow, face block. Secret block, touch your elbow, face block. Itch, me, sun, she, go, rook, sitch, hatch, ku, and you. Okay, let's speed it up a little bit, make it a little bit more smooth. You ready? Let's start here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. That's your face block. Protect the face, protect the whole body. Let's move on to chest block. A little bit less complicated, but still important to know. From here, start with your Wolverine block. It always helps the kids remember. Open. Secret block. Touch the elbow. Chest block. You want your fist in line with your elbow and your pinky just past your shoulder. From here, like so. Try not to drop too close too wide. You don't need to block the people next to you. Keep your elbow protecting that soft, squishy, floating rib. From here. Itch. Me. Sun. She. Go. Rook. Sitch. Hatch. Cool. And you. Looks like you're getting the hang of chest block. Let's move on to stomach block. It's probably the most complicated block before we get to mawashi uke nana. But let's start from here. One hand up, one hand down. Imagine you like a clock. 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock. This is how I teach it to the little ones. Wipe your nose to make sure they do that face block. Wipe your nose down your sleeve. Imagine now as you get to that elbow, it runs away. And finish. Wipe your nose, down your sleeve, chop off. Wipe your nose, down your sleeve, pull. Sped up, but we don't have to go there just yet. Let's go together. One, two, three. One, two, three. Cover your face, wipe your nose, down your sleeve, and pull back. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Let's make it one smooth move now, slowly to start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, 
and 10. Got that? Now we've done face block, chest block, stomach block. I'd like to do one more block because this covers a lot of the other blocks you will need to know. It's the famous Mawashi Uke. Beautiful, beautiful block. Encompasses a whole lot of moves and is in nearly all of our cutters, right through to Super Rinpe, where it appears many, many times. Off the top of my head, I'm not sure. That's a fifth down question. So from here, this is how we start by teaching our little ones. One hand in chamber, one hand is here. Pick up a book. Book is boring. First mosquito. Imagine the mosquito is going past your face. Second mosquito. It's on your belt. You're flicking it off and coming back to chamber. And from here, push out. But those your elbows must stay close to the body. Don't go big. Do not do crocodile mouth. Those hands are pulled back. Keep those wrinkles in the back of your wrist. Let's start again. From here, pick up a book. Book is boring. Face mosquito. You're knocking that face mosquito away. Pull back to chamber. Second mosquito is on your belt. You're knocking it off. From here, keep those elbows in and push and finish. Because there are so many bunkais and applications for this, we're going to keep it very simple. This hand should be in line with your hip and this hand in line with your shoulder for now. Later, in other videos, you'll see in bunkais, can be here, can be there, going for the groin, you'll see toroguchi. Right now, we're working on the basic version. So, one more time together, pick up a book. Book is boring. Face, mosquito. Stomach, mosquito. Dead, mosquito. Pick up a book. Book is boring. Face, mosquito. Stomach, mosquito. Dead, mosquito. And for fun with the kids. There we go. You can do this. Let's go. Pick up a book. Book is boring. Face, mosquito. Stomach, mosquito. Dead, mosquito. Pick up a book. Book is boring. Face, mosquito. Stomach, mosquito. Dead, mosquito. Okay. Now we're going to do it without the nursery rhyme. One, two, three, four, five. Five parts. When you are learning, don't be afraid to use the nursery rhyme to help you. Pick up a book. The book is boring. Face, mosquito. Stomach, mosquito. Dead, mosquito. Now without the nursery rhyme. One, two, three, four, five. One smooth movement. If it's too complicated, break it down. We're going to do it slowly together. One more time. Pick up a book. The book is boring. Face, mosquito. Stomach, mosquito. Dead, mosquito. I'm not going to do very complicated kicks. We've done videos before on different styles of kicks or the more complicated ones. I would like to teach you, though, how to do a very basic Maigiri because this will come up in most of your cutters. It's a great kick. It doesn't require huge amounts of talent. It doesn't require huge amounts of skill. It requires a couple of um, basics, some fundamentals, to get a good, solid kick. When a guy tried to mug me once, this is the one thing that came to mind after many years of training, and it worked, dude ran away. So, there's that for it. That's my anecdotal story there. So, from here, hands up. Or you can have open hands, it's up to you. Uh, we like to teach basics just to keep working on that fist and that grip strength from here. Feet once again in high kodach. Lift your knee. Your kick fires from the knee. So if your knee is low, the kick is low. Bring up your knee to about there. From here, pull your toes back. I'm going to go from the side. See the toes are pulled back. From here, knee, toes back. Strike with the ball of the foot back and down. Oh no. From here, lift your knee. The higher your knee, the higher your kick. 
Low knee, kicking the Smurfs. High knee, kicking knee, target. So from here, pull your toes back and fire. From the side, lift your knee up, pull your toes back, hit with the ball of the foot, back and down. One, two, three, four. One, two. It's very easy to get into the habit of only practicing on your favorite leg. It's good to train both. So let's go together. We're going to do about 20 Maigiri. Itch. Knee. Sun. She. Go. Rook. Sitch. Hutch. Ku. And you. I'd like you to aim for my belly button in the camera. Okay. Use that as your target. Itch. Knee. Sun. She. Go. Rook. Sitch. Hutch. Ku. And you. And to go with that, he's a Gary. Knee strike. We like this because it, does, it works very well for when you're in close range. You have a gigantic weapon here. The whole knee, it's harder to break things compared to using your toes. And the bunk I'd like you to visualize is grabbing the person. One moment. We're using these dudes in the dojo for the little ones to do randori and kicking drills because obviously with COVID, it's not safe to do partner work and won't be for a while. So at least they can knock these guys around. Um, and we also use it with the adults with certain drills as well. For an adult, they're the perfect height for Kansetsu Gary. Good job. Right. He's a Gary. So from here, you have your opponent. And he's a Gary is great for an incapacitating blow when they're in close range. Especially, and I hate to be a downer, but as a woman's self-defense, not necessarily for the groin. Men are expecting that. But grabbing the back of their head and introducing their face to your knee is not a bad idea. He's a Gary. Knee strike. Itch. I want you to bring your hands down to get that feeling of bringing something to the knee. Knee. Sun. She. My toes are pointed. Go. Rook. Sitch. Hutch. Ku. And Ju. Another 10. Itch. Knee. Sun, she, go, rook, sitch, hatch, ku, and ju. Let's put all of these basics into one sequence that you can practice at home. Now, this kata was developed by uh, our friends at Palm Court Karate, by Sensei Mario, and I think by Sensei Aubrey Peterson, I stand under correction. But this kata actually isn't really an OGKK kata or a Goju Ryu kata. It's a kata developed for teaching children. What I really like about this kata is it's only 10 moves. You can teach it to someone in their first class. It gives them something they can take home. And it's uh, very easy to learn. So we're going to do kata daiichi from here. Rei. Kata daiichi. Yoi. Jump. Pull back, both hands into hikite. Itch. The jump is for kids to help them learn uh, proprioception and how to move their bodies in space. Very helpful. Left hand, chest punch. Right hand, chest punch. Left hand, face block. Remember, touch that elbow and up. Right hand, face block. Left hand, chest block. Right hand, chest block. Left hand, stomach block. Right hand, stomach block. Hands up. Kick once. Kick twice. Big jump and spin and ki One, two, three. Now, let's go through it without the instructions. It's based on all the basics we've done today, so I'm sure you're going to follow it just fine. From here. Katadaiichi. Itch, knee, sun, she, 
Go. Rock. Sitch. Hatch. Ku. Ju. Ich. Ni. And sun. Ich. Ni. Sun. Shi. And obviously, I'm sure you're going to move from this video to Gekusare Ichi, which is the first uh, true cutter of Gojuru, and it's part of our white and yellow belt syllabus. Uh, to all the Jaguars who are watching this, hopefully this helps with what we've been doing in class and what we'll always do in class, regardless of whether you're a five-year-old white belt or a 50-year-old white belt. These are the foundations upon which your karate will grow. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below. We love, love, love to hear from you. Uh, one of the big delights of our morning coffee is going over any comments we may have received over the evening from our many American followers. And we try to respond as the best we can to all of them. We're always grateful for every comment you send and for all your feedback. We're trying to build on it and learn as much as we can. Thank you for spending time with me today. I really appreciate your time and that you've made it here to the end of the video. And I wish you continued good health and safety and that we will see you on the mat someday. Take care. Arigato. Kozaimasu.